Hey, what's up everyone? This is Dom and today we are checking out Apple's brand new 12 inch MacBook with Retina display and we are going to unbox it, take a look around the hardware and check out some benchmarks. So we are dealing with the base model here, the 1.1 gigahertz dual core Intel M processor, eight gigabytes of RAM. We also have the Intel 5300 graphics and 256 gigabytes of internal storage. And you can pick this up for $12.99. Now inside of the box, as you can see, we have the MacBook and it is incredibly small and thin, but we will take a closer look at this in a little while. Jumping into the rest of the box here though, we do have some documentation. We have our quick start guide and some space gray Apple stickers because this is the space gray model. Along with that, we have our USB type C charging cable and we have our USB-C 29 watt power adapter, but you actually don't get the extension cable as you would with a traditional MacBook. Now opening up the lid for the first time, this thing is a work of art. I really love the space gray finish, but it also does come in silver and gold in case you're into any of those colors. But everything has been redesigned here from the keyboard to the trackpad. I mean, look at how thin this damn thing is. It's just crazy. Unfortunately, with this design, we lose out on the glowing Apple logo on the back, which has been replaced by a shiny Apple logo like you'll find on the iPad and iPhone. And another compromise here is the fact that we have one port for all of your I.O. So this is a USB Type-C port, and this is going to mean adapters galore if you want to do anything as far as I.O. is concerned. But the good news is that USB Type-C is 100% reversible, and that may not matter to you because, well, you're losing out on a MagSafe plug as you would find with a traditional MacBook, but it's very fast and it's definitely the future of computers, so I hope to see it evolve more in the future. On the other side of the MacBook, we have two small microphones and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and that's all you get. With the 12 inch MacBook, we do have a full size keyboard and 17% larger keys than a traditional MacBook. And Apple has also redesigned the keyboard switches with a new butterfly mechanism that actually gives us a 40% thinner key assembly, which leads to shallower travel all around, but I actually found it comfortable to type on. And along with that, we have a new Force Touch trackpad, and I actually made a video going over all of the features with the Force Touch trackpad. So if you wanna find out more about it, I definitely encourage you to check out my top features video, which I will leave linked down below because these new features are pretty damn cool. As for the 12 inch retina display, we have a resolution of 2304 by 1440 and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I have nothing bad to say about the display. Apple just does the retina displays right. Moving along here, something else that's interesting to note is the fact that you can charge up the MacBook's 5191 milliamp hour battery with an external battery pack. So you can effectively double or even triple your battery life using an adapter cable and a power bank. And I'll leave both of those linked down below for you. As for the front facing camera, well, this is where things get kind of depressing because Apple decided to put in a 480p camera, yes. 480p. And looking at it on a UHD frame, you can see just how small that little image is. Now, granted, this will work for most people, but I was kind of disappointed that we didn't at least get 720p. So now that we've gone over the hardware with the 12 inch MacBook, how does it perform? Well, let's take a look at benchmarks and starting out with Geekbench 3, we have a single core score of 2504 and a multi-core score of 4638. Now jumping into Nova Bench, you can see here that we have a score of 544 and move Moving along to Cinebench R15, we have an OpenGL score of 18.49 frames per second and a CPU score of 196. Finally, in Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, you can see here that we have a write speed of around 486 megabytes per second, while the read speed is right around 775. One thing I was curious to try out on this new MacBook is video editing. So I imported some 4K and 1080p clips and installed Adobe Premiere and started chopping. So I could cut through the clip no problem, but playback was very, very horrible. It was dropping frames left and right, at least in 4K. Surprisingly, I was able to edit 1080p footage no problem at all. I had to scale down the performance a little bit, but it was smooth playback. There was no issues whatsoever. So I cut together a one minute clip of 4K and a one minute clip of 1080p. And the 1080p took around four minutes to export while the 4K one minute clip took around 12. So that about wraps it up for this video. And if you enjoyed it and you wanna catch my full review of the MacBook, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not already for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching everyone. This is Dom and I'll catch you in the next video.